I'm here at Walmart where they're 3D printing the second building uh, here. Alquist 3D has two RIC printers and they're going about 16 feet high this time. They've improved their process tremendously by reducing the number of moves required for the printer. So they're printing in a total of three different printer locations and they started off on this wall which has reached full height. They're now working on that second wall which they'll hopefully finish out today and then do a hot swap over to this printer which is the longest section. They should be able to finish that out in another day or two totaling seven maybe eight print days if everything goes well and we're hopefully going to get to see a huge portion of that so everything that's dark they've completed uh, while I've been here today on their sixth day of printing and inside of this tent is the mixing system we're going to get to talk to founder Zach and I just sat down with him here and did a great podcast episode you can check that out at the link in the description we've also got the RIC CEO here tomorrow we'll have Sika on site and this is shaping up to be an awesome video all about their second Walmart project and that's really a big deal for a company to come back and want to do another after the first one so stay tuned and learn everything they learned from the last project and everything they're hoping to do better on the next one. Zach, I'd ask you how you're doing, but we just sat down for almost an hour and a half. That was like a, a week-long podcast. That was great. It was a great episode, long overdue. Uh, we talked about a lot of awesome stuff, so I know we're on day six of the project. Uh, which, where did you start? What was day one? Day, day one was loading, was just getting here, getting the robot were set up and calibrated. I was not on site for that. No, this is actually, uh, I got here late last night. So today is actually the first time I'm actually on site. Oh, so what's your first impression like? I, to look around and this is day six, uh, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty happy. Compared to the, the first project, where what was day six like there? Uh, losing hair, losing sleep, uh, stressed beyond belief. By the time I got there, you guys seemed pretty calm. Cool we had figured the first two weeks of that print did not go well, uh, primarily because of climate. Oh, there are two things really. It, it was, it was the material was not working in the uh, the weather that we had. On top of that, um, it was uh, the design was very complicated, and it was partially because you know they did the design and we didn't do it with them. We figured it out; it was great. But everybody sat down afterwards and like, all right, what would it be like if we did this design together? And that's what you're seeing. It really is a massive test of robustness to go from the 100 degree crazy weather there to now yes. it's like 40 degrees or something like that This today. morning when we started it was 27. Uh, so we were printing in that. Uh, we uh, Really a lot of it has to go to Chris Vaughn over there. Chris is the one that figured out how to regulate the water temperature um, that's allowing us to print from 27 degrees to 110 degrees. So if people watch during the podcast, they might see something happen behind us. Do you know what happened? Did you get the story? I did. So the st we cutting the steel. So we only had one scissor lift outside or, mm -hmm. uh, outside today, and so we weren't cutting the steel fast enough to when the printer was coming along. It's actually a, a good problem, but a problem. So we had to stop to make sure we could cut the steel properly before we started the pump up again. So the steel we're seeing, those are the vertical columns. Yeah. So if you look here, every Every six feet, there's uh, one of these guys that has uh, rebar all the way down to the, the bottom. Cool. And this, this was part of the design. This is what's allowing us to go from three beads to two. And it's saving us, I think Eamon said, the 33% of material uh, and tons of time. I mean, this is day six. I mean, uh, there were prints where day six, we still couldn't get the robot to work. <laughs> so this is... I am I am overjoyed with where this is going. Can we take a peek inside the mixing station? Absolutely, come on. So what, what's really cool here is our collaboration with My Pump. Then working with them, this is our first time using the My, this, this My, we used the My on the last one, but this is a souped up, more powerful My. I got to meet Gavin Gervin at Where the Concrete, he's the man. Oh, he's awesome. And. Uh, the pumps are the, uh, the silo is one of the smallest silos we've ever had to work with. And, Same one from the last project, the smaller one? Uh, yes. And these guys, as you can see, uh, they, it doesn't look like they're working hard, but they are. And it's, they, there isn't much to do except for regulation, and they're killing it. Also, these two guys are new for us. They trained on this 
project. So wow. now day six, I think it was day four, they finally went uh, solo where they were able to do this without supervision. And they're killing it. And you know, most of our old school guys are here standing around watching. And it's a, it's a, a non-stressful environment, which is exciting. It looks like we're, I don't know, 10 or 12 layers away from cresting and being done with this wall, which I think will be 16 uh, foot four. Really excited to see the hot swap. That'll yeah. be a big highlight. That's coming, and that's when we're gonna get, so there you can see uh, Naka's getting that ready to run. Is this the longest straight you've done? Uh, maybe the one in Tennessee might have been a little longer. Uh, close. And it's Joe Crimmings, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Creative director. He's, he's creating. Um, let's see, what else is happening here? I mean, it's a pretty, you know, normally we're running around trying to look at this and that. and These are new printers on this site compared to the old Walmart. Yes, yes. So not, not that one. That The M0 is the same one that we had. This is our new, this is the uh, Primus. So this guy, um, in terms of uh, length, is the biggest thing. Uh, I would the reach of the arm? Yes. So if you see here, the addition that we made, that we welded that going onto this allows us to have significantly longer reach so that this print makes more sense and allows us also to only to not have to move the robot. So we have longer stretch. And like I said before, there's only one robot move on this entire print. And that already happened. So this bot was over there printing that wall yesterday and finished and moved over here. This one doesn't move. This is just gonna be here the entire print. And so hopefully we're done here and uh, soon. This guy's gonna get into action in, I don't know, about an hour. And uh, we'll continue going down this side here. It's almost like a one-man chess game trying to figure out where to move all the pieces. It is, it is, it is. And you know, the first Walmart print, we had 16 moves. Every time we move the bot, we lose half a day. Uh, sometimes we leave a whole, uh, lose a whole day if we have a big move. So, but that's also some of the differences between like a gantry and an arm. So a gantry, the benefit is you don't have to move it. It takes a while to set it up, but then you've got the span and you don't have to move it at all and you can just print and that's good. I think you lose a little bit of the quality that you need from that and it's harder to regulate. That's why I like this better. Uh, and so we're looking forward to the job sites where we have multiples of these going and we're gonna be printing at the same time with both bots. That's coming soon. Did I hear it's possible you'd have three robots on the next uh, Walmart project like this? Uh, hopefully, yeah. Would you consider increasing the number of mixers or is one enough? Oh, I would love to have more. I mean, frankly, I'd like to have one pump station that is strong enough to power two, three, four printers oh, cool. at the same time. Uh, that doesn't exist yet. People are working on it, but... Like a heart with multiple arteries. Exactly, yes. And then, and ideally, one person controlling the printer, or controlling all the printers at the oh, same time. Cool. Like, here, the vision for us on the next print is can we have two printers operating at the same time with eight people on the job site? And I think we can, that's what we're gonna try. Here's a time lapse of them completing the hot swap. I didn't want to bother them because this was a critical moment, but they switched from one machine to the other in only four minutes using the same mixer. Um, Wyatt, I'm a senior operations manager at Alquist, but I'm the site super for this Walmart job. And yesterday was your sixth day of printing overall. What'd you get done? Yeah, so if you look behind me here, the, the wall on the left side, you can see the delineation of what's dark. Uh, we printed that from 10 feet up to 16 and a half feet. That's a 44 foot run. And then this wall right here, we took from nine feet up to 13 foot two, uh, and that's a 52 foot run. So about 500 square foot of wall. That's wild progress for one day. And what do you have planned for today? Uh, today, we're gonna top this wall out to 16 foot. And then over here, we've got a uh, 62 foot run of wall. We're gonna take this up to 16 foot as well. Should be about 600 square foot of wall. What do you think the timeline is like for this first half? Uh, for this first half, we've got some structural uh, items we're dealing with. Uh, we've got an interesting load path on this job, so we're going to build up 
to about a 13 foot, swap over to this wall to give our guys time to lay in the steel, top that wall off, and then we'll come back over. Cool, thanks Wyatt. Yeah, thank you. They continued working well into the night after the hot swap, bringing the wall up to height. Pay attention to the corner here. You can see them installing the rebar in that section first and then other sections while the print is going on. Nick Pulley, FMGI Lead Superintendent. So we're currently printing, obviously you can see it, 5,000 square foot building. It's a commercial structure for Walmart and it's the online pickup. And FMGI does a lot of these, huh? It's our second one with Alquist. Of Not course, just printed though, all kinds of uh, Walmart. Construction. Yes. Now, as far as Walmarts go, we're one of the we're one of the preferred contractors for a Walmart. Very cool. And how many units? How many of these do you build a year at Walmart's? We've gone up to over fifty. Wow. We, we've done over fifty Walmart projects in a year. So, how do you think three D compares to uh, the other ones you built? It depends. Everything has its variables. In <clears throat> on this particular project. I wouldn't have been able to do this. I wouldn't have been able to push a masonry crew in the weather conditions that we've faced. And with the progress that we've made, I couldn't have done this particular one with CMU. Wow, well, that's good to hear. I was gonna tell you to go easy on it because it's a new technology, but it sounds like uh, you had we, a good experience. We've been, we've been going on this one pretty hard. Yeah, I don't have some of the issues I would face with CMU, like the keeping the blocks dry, bringing the blocks up to temperature, uh, of course, the safety concerns with scaffolding. Um, I would have had a, I would have had a much larger crew of masons to maintain this pace. So, I'm seeing the benefits 100%. It's also much less backbreaking. You don't have to bend over, pick up the blocks. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I don't have, I don't have very big open areas of scaffolding laying around, block laying around. I don't have a lot of the things that create a headache for guys in my position. Can you tell me about those? The seismic couplers, so we're actually utilizing the seismic couplers because they exceed most everything that engineers typically require. We're using the seismic couplers as transitions between what we are using for threaded rebar. So the seismic couplers was a trick that we picked up on at the last 3D printed project in Athens. And seeing as they exceed everything required without having to lap and splice the rebar, we decided to use them for transitions between our threaded rebar. How long do you have to wait after the print until you can pour concrete in? We're trying to bring it down. Right now, we've gone from five days that we were waiting in Athens to three days here. Nice. And if everything is looking good with the testing that we're doing, we hope to get that down to two days. And then you get to height and do a bomb beam? Yes. So that's what, so that's what you're seeing now with the rebar with the 90s up there. That's headers and bond beams. And then we'll pour the bond beam just tip, we'll pour the bond beam in your typical fashion. Did you guys do that cinder block wall? No. You can tell we didn't do it. Did you see all the cracks in it? That's not us. <laughs> no, the, the, the structure was here. It was an existing structure. And then there was an existing structure as well that was the ODP. And we tore it down along with the canopy out here came back, did all the site work, all the horizontal work, and then we're going back up with the 3D CP. Very cool, hopefully you do many more. Oh, I, I think we will. This one was a big determining factor. So um, after the progress, we got more. It's good to hear, thank you, Nick. Absolutely, thank you. We are here in Huntsville, Alabama. And it's uh, getting late. It's getting late. This is uh, day seven of active printing, um, only day, nine of calendar three, we had lost three days due to rain um and on those three days we had around four inches of rain so it was impossible work for any crew um we're topping out our last section of print here on our 5,000 square foot addition this uh building is uh currently 16 foot six inches behind me the wall it's being printed is roughly at that 15 foot uh miles uh, milestone uh, the team out here has been putting a lot of a lot of hard work to produce high quality walls and precision. You know, this is uh, you know a next level as far as efficiencies that we expected and uh, anticipated. You know, we uh, today we'll be shooting or we'll we will complete 612 square feet in a single print cycle. Amazing. Uh, with 
uh, one clean out at the beginning of the day, uh, printing in two different locations. Um, that is the uh, Project High uh, with several other days hitting the 600 square foot and uh, 400 respectively uh, throughout the project. And Nick mentioned you're doing some testing, structural testing on some of these walls? Yeah, so on all, uh, prior to beginning of, of days, we take uh, mortar cubes in compliance with uh, C109, uh, two inch by two inch mortar cubes, as well as some cylinders to verify compression testing. And we'll be doing some flexible with face testing just to verify and allow our structural engineers to further refine our wall systems in order to bring our costs down even more than they currently are. Was there other testing you're doing on the full wall specimen so that you can change the way you build in the future? Yeah, so we're looking at, uh, with that flexible, we're testing different turn back designs and various other items just to um, allow us to make more database decisions around how we design our walls. Awesome, can't wait to see it implemented and uh, hopefully we get to see this finish up tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Great work. Thank you. These guys have worked their asses off finishing up a 14 hour shift, making it possible to complete this almost 5,000 square foot expansion to the Walmart building in just seven print days. I heard it was nine calendar days, not including the weekends. They had a couple of days of rain and even the days they were printing, they had wild print schedules. And I'm sure all these guys can't wait to finish the project out, celebrate and get a good night's sleep that's well deserved. Here it is, the very last line of the second addition to a printed Walmart massive commercial project by Alquist, RIC, Sika. Really a moment of history we're about to witness as they complete the very last layer. They printed in three different printer locations with two different printers, moved the printer way less time, I think one or two times. Just gonna go around the other side in three, two, one. That's it. Major success for these guys coming in ahead of schedule. Congratulations. Job well done. And that's how you 3D print to Walmart. Hopefully, it won't be the last one. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check in for the next one.